Hello and welcome to Stories from India, a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I'm your host Narad Muni and I'm a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I'm a traveling musician and a storyteller. So the way I'm doing my job is by podcast. This week, we'll meet a killer dad and a killer aunt from hell. Literature is full of evil aunts. There's Bertie Wooster's Aunt Agatha, Harry Potter's Aunt Petunia, and the ants from James and the Giant Peach, to name just a few. But none of these is as evil as the one we are about to meet. I mean, yes, Aunt Agatha eats broken bottles and Aunt Petunia makes Harry live on scraps and James's ants make him do all the chores. But how would it be if an ant wanted to kill her nephew? Today's story is a two-parter and we'll meet just this delightful person. The character this week is a tiger who is also actually a real historical person. Our story begins with brother and sister, Hiranyakashipu and Holika. Technically, they were two brothers and one sister, but we have already encountered one of the brothers before. We saw Hiranyaksha as the demon who was killed by the character of the week in episode 9, a clever minister in King Akbar's court. And I know what you're thinking, Their parents really had a fascination for the letter H when they named their kids. Anyway, we start with what villains usually do in these stories. Hiranyakashipu, whom I'm going to call Hira, prayed to Brahma for a long time. Impressed by his devotion and not at all suspecting any evil take over the world kind of plans, Brahma appeared before him. If you haven't heard earlier episodes, you should know that Brahma is my dad. He is the creator in the Holy Trinity, also starring Vishnu the Preserver and Shiva the Destroyer. And especially if you haven't heard the earlier episodes, Brahma is incredibly easy to please. Making someone immortal or giving them superpowers to destroy the whole world Sure, that's just a regular day in the office for him. Today was no different. Except that when Hira asked to be made immortal, Brahma said no. You heard that right. My dad actually said no to this request. But don't get too excited. Because he added, Hira, I really do want to reward you. You can have any wish you like. I want to be immortal, said Hira. Except that, said Brahma. Oh, all right, let me think, said Hira. If Brahma couldn't make him immortal explicitly, Hira could still find a way indirectly. He thought, I will ask for a totally impossible way to die. Okay, said Hira. I wish to decide on my manner of death. Or rather, I want to eliminate all the ways that I can die. That sounds good, said Brahma. Hira continued, When I die, it must be by neither a human, nor an animal, nor a god. It must be neither day nor night. It must be neither indoors nor outdoors. I must not be killed by either Astra or Shastra which are Sanskrit words for projectile weapons, like arrows and missiles, or handheld weapons, like swords and spears. I must not be killed on the ground or in the sky. Did you get all that? he asked Brahma, as Brahma was jotting all this down. Mm Mm-hmm. Five conditions in there. Want to add water? No, but I'll get a side of fries with that, said Hira. Brahma glared at him and clarified, I meant, do you want to add water to the list of places you can't be killed? 
Oh, oh yes, I hadn't thought of that. I don't want to die by accidental drowning. Even though the day-night thing and the indoors-outdoors thing protects me well, I'd better not take a chance. Water too, please. Brahma snapped his fingers and it happened. Woohoo, Hira said, and immediately whatsapped his sister, Horika. Big Brahma giveaway, come quick. Holika did come quick, and she received something from Brahma as well. They compared gifts later, as members of a sibling often do. I got a fireproof cloak, said Holika. Hira laughed at her. What are you going to do? Be a fireman? A firewoman, she corrected. In fact, firefighter is the better term. Regardless, I'm not going to be either. You're just a meanie. You're jealous of my cloak. Tell me what you got. Hira explained his five conditions. And Holika's reply was immediate. You think you are being smart, don't you? You won't be killed on the ground and not in the sky. Well, what about a tree or a rooftop? Hira was stunned into silence. Holika continued, And what's more, you only said sky. You didn't say earth sky. If you think about it, the entire earth is in the moon sky. That's nonsense, he said. The moon is just a nightlight. Our ancient Indian science has long proved that the moon can't have a sky. Don't spew your fantasy conspiracy theories about how the moon is a rock that goes around the earth and all that silly stuff. Well, he thought to himself, she was right about the trees and the rooftops though. He must avoid them at all costs. He would just have to rely on the other four conditions. Good thing he had backups. Maybe he could have added a few more to eliminate disease as a possible means of death. Things went on for a while. Hira assumed the throne. He thought himself immortal for having conjured up a manner of death impossible to happen by any known science at the time. One day, seeing his people worshipping Vishnu, he thought to himself, they're worshipping Vishnu because he's eternal. But come to think of it, I am eternal now. Inevitable even. I'm immortal. Besides, I'm right here and I rule over these people. Why worship Vishnu, who I don't even know where he lives? They should really worship me. Soon, the orders went out. There was to be no more Vishnu worship. Only Hira would be worshipped. Instead of visiting a temple and praying to an idol of Vishnu, they could come to the palace and pray to a living, breathing Hira instead. The sale of entry tickets alone would make a fortune. He was disappointed, therefore, when not many people showed up. So, people didn't think him worthy of worship. Well, they were going to pay for this, and not just the entry tickets. More orders went out. Soldiers stormed into people's houses and took away all their Vishnu statues. Mission accomplished, Hira was thrilled. Now people would be forced to worship him, he thought. Just as he was being high-spirited and chummy with everyone around him, he came across it. An idol of Vishnu in his own house. What is this doing here? He was about to scream, but then he noticed something worse. His own son, Prahlad, was praying to Vishnu. No, 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 boy, stop it. You have it all wrong, Hira said. We don't pray to Vishnu, he told the little boy. I know you don't, daddy, replied the boy, but I do. Hira then proceeded to say a lot of stuff about what he thought of Vishnu. I will repeat only the remarks that were civil. Done. That was easy. Unfortunately for Hira, Prahlad not only didn't agree with him, 
but he also had the impudence to suggest that he be allowed to maintain his own religious freedom. Hira was starting to lose patience with the boy. He tried to bribe him with toys, video games, comic books. Nothing worked. Prahlad was calm and confident in the face of Hira's tantrums. This was quite unusual for a preteen boy. Vishnu is supreme, Prahlad continued to say. Oh, and you think he knows and understands everything, does he? asked Hira. He does, said Prahlad. And if something were to happen to you, he'll protect you, will he? Possibly, if he thinks it's the right thing to do. He wouldn't, snapped Hira. Here, I am all-powerful. Vishnu dare not enter here. Prahlad replied, Vishnu can go anywhere he pleases. Hira stormed out, still very angry. He met Holika outside, and quickly he told her all the trouble. The boy needs to be taught a lesson, said Hira. And at the same time, he could serve as bait, if I wanted a showdown with Vishnu, added Hira. Why do you want a showdown with Vishnu? asked Holika. He's been encroaching in my territory for too long. People here should worship me, not him. Say, do you still have that cloak with you? I have an idea. Holika did have the cloak with her. But she didn't seem very certain of Hira's evil plan. A large stack of wood was laid out, with a chair on top, all at Hira's orders. Holika was there, on the chair, wearing her cloak, the boy Pralhad on her lap. Now tell your most favorite auntie, she began. You're my only aunt, interrupted Pralhad. That doesn't mean I'm not your favorite. Now tell me, whom will you worship, your father or Vishnu? Vishnu was the boy's reply. Wrong answer, said Holika. I'll give you another chance. Your father or Vishnu? Come on, Prahlad. This isn't hard. Pick one. Need I remind you that you already picked Vishnu and that was the wrong answer? Vishnu, said Prahlad again. All right, on your own head be it. She signaled to Hira's people, who quickly set the stack on fire. The fire began raging in no time. Holika, comfortably wrapped in her fireproof cloak, ho-hummed and whistled a tune to herself. And Prahlad? He had no protection. He started praying. Holika, noticing this, asked, with her hopes slightly raised, You're praying to your daddy, aren't you? No, to Vishnu. Prahlad said. Holika shook her head disappointed. The flames continued to rise all around them. I'll leave it here on a cliffhanger this week. Even though I'm pretty certain many of you already know or have guessed what happens next. Some notes on the show. You might wonder why Prahlad was such a Vishnu fan. Well, the answer is easy. It's all thanks to me. Yep, me. I'd often be singing praises of Vishnu, and Prahlad often heard me. Yeah, I can certainly make quite an impression. Holika is the reason we celebrate the festival of Holi. As it happens, this festival is right around the corner. If you haven't heard of it, it's a spring festival in India that involves a lot of colors. People spray colored water at each other, and generally, the streets resemble a psychedelic rock album cover. What do the colors mean, you may ask? There are a few different schools of thought. Not all of them say that an evil ant had anything to do with it. Some say that each color symbolizes a particular character attribute. In other versions, Spraying colored water on each other was a game that Krishna played with his milkmaid friends growing up. 
all of these versions agree that playing with colors is fun and not at all a grisly reminder of how an evil aunt is trying to kill her nephew under guidance from the boy's evil father. I've linked some pictures of the colorful celebrations on the site sfipodcast.com. Check them out. The character this week is a tiger who was actually a real historical person. It's Tipu Sultan, the tiger of Mysore. Tipu Sultan was a human, not a tiger. He was the ruler of Mysore, which was the name of a state in India. But it is now a charming little city, not too far from Bangalore. Tipu Sultan was the son of Hyder Ali, who was the de facto ruler of the kingdom of Mysore. Hyder Ali, being illiterate himself, overcompensated when it came to Tipu's education and ensured the boy received every academic, sport and military training. Tipu was given charge of several diplomatic and military missions at the young age of 17. He pioneered rocket artillery in his wars against the British invasion. And I'm not talking about the rock and roll invasion from the 1960s, but a much deadlier invasion 200 years earlier. While in power, Tipu also helped bootstrap the silk industry in Mysore, as well as championing a new set of coins. Ultimately, Tipu Sultan was killed when the British tag-teamed with the Marathas. They recognized the fight that he had put up though. For his ferocity, he earned the title of Tiger of Mysore. I've linked some pictures of Tipu Sultan on the site sfipodcast.com, so check them out. That's it for this week. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at sfipodcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically. Thanks to all you listeners for your continued support. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Next week, we'll continue the story of Holika and Pralhad as we'll see how strange events conspire to a specific end. Very much like in the Final Destination movies, but instead in a very positive way. To prevent death, not to cause it. At least to some extent. The character next week has a very special power. In every fight, half of his opponent's powers are magically transferred over to him. This makes him impossible to defeat. Except by sniper attack. I'll see you next week.